I just recently did a video doing an unboxing and review of some of the newest Loungefly Minnie Mouse ears, and I was particularly disappointed in the functionality of these pin trading display ears because you have to attach them with a pin back, and due to the thickness of the ears, it is not possible to get pins to stay on securely. So I love the design of the ears, they're super cute, but in terms of actually being able to display and wear your pins, do not work at all. Also, Disney just released their version of pin trading display ears, and I have not seen them in person, but I guarantee that they will not work because they are even thicker than these lounge fly ears, and so there is no way to get a pin and put a pin back on it and have it stay on. And I know that Disney knows this because when they preview these ears at the pin event last year, they only had a few pins around the very, very edge of the ears where it is thin because that's the only place you can get the pins on. So what I wanted to do was create my own version of fully functional pin trading display ears. Now, this is not a new concept. People on Etsy for a while have been selling pin display ears, and from what I've seen, they've typically all been made of cork, but I decided to make these ears out of the pin pages from Crack and Trade. So these ears are a super high quality, high density foam where you can stick the pins in and they will stay nice and secure. Of course, that doesn't mean that they're totally foolproof. Like if you have pins out in the open, they can, you know, always potentially come loose or come off. But in terms of doing a DIY, this is pretty much as secure as you can get. So here are the ears that I was able to make. And you can see as they work, you have your pins stuck in so you can remove them and then put them back on and they're on there really quite nice and secure. So from making them like this, you can put pins on the front and the back, which is what I've done here, but I will say this does make the ears pretty heavy, but this is at least showing like the full possibilities of this and also the fact that like you don't have to use pin backs or worry about anything like that. I also really love the fun design that I went for with these. In terms of like how you want to make these look, there's kind of like endless possibilities. So this is sort of a DIY video because you can follow along if you want, but also I just kind of, you know, wanted to do a little fun project and kind of remedy the shortcomings of some official pin trading ears. So let's get into how I made these. Here I just have one of the regular Kraken Trade foam insert pages. I took these from one of my books, but they do sell them where you can buy just these inserts. And I have my standard ear template. This is a 10 centimeter diameter circle with an arc at the bottom, and this arc matches the curve of the headband. So I have this white marker, and I'll be able to trace out. I just need two ears, but with this size foam, you could end up making four ears or two pairs of ears. And then I'm gonna see how well it works to cut this out with an X-Acto knife. This is pretty thick and it is quite sturdy. It has the best hold on pins out of kind of any material I've seen so far. So I will see how successful I am with the X-Acto knife cutting. I have both of these ears cut out and I just used a fine grit sandpaper to kind of smooth down the edges. You could go ahead and use these just as is, but there's tons of options for if you want to decorate the edges and give them a little bit more pizzazz. So what I'm going to do, I have these little styrofoam colorful beads. 
I'd gotten them off of AliExpress. I hoped that I could use them as fake non-pearl sprinkles, but they're too large for what I need to do. So I think that they would look super cute as kind of trim around these ears. I'm planning on just using some E6000 glue, putting that around the side and then just kind of like rolling them as if they were real sprinkles. And hopefully that'll give us a fun, colorful look. So I got both of these ears done. I love how this turned out. It really reminds me of like a nerd's rope, but I think it adds a really fun bit of color to the side, but the possibilities are really endless for how you could embellish or decorate these ears. But now we need to make the headband to actually attach these ears onto. So as always, I have my standard one inch plastic headbands and I'm going to cover it in this super fun multicolored dots fabric. I got it from Joanne's online. It just kind of seemed interesting and I think it will be a perfect complement to the rim of the ears. So we're gonna go ahead and get that headband made. I always put double-sided tape on the headband and then tape it down to the fabric and then glue it on. I've got my headband template to cut out the fabric. And if you'd like to see the full process of how I make these headbands and how you can make a headband template, check out my latest DIY Minnie Mouse The Main Attraction Enchanted Tiki Room video. And just like magic, we have the headband all assembled and put together. I think this looks super cute with this fabric. What I've also done is I've already gone ahead and I've marked the center of the headband and then I've marked four centimeters down on each side so I'll know where to glue the ears. I find it super important to use a measuring tape and actually measure on the ears and mark where you wanna glue things. I hate it when people just eyeball and like glue willy-nilly and then things are just off-centered. But now we can go ahead and glue our ears onto the headband. I'm gonna use a little bit of a combination of E6000 glue and hot glue. E6000 will have a stronger hold, but hot glue will set pretty quickly. So I'm gonna put some hot glue in the center and then I'm gonna put some E6000 around the edges and then place it on the headband where marked. And there we go, now we have the ears all cute and assembled. If you find that you have some kind of glue coming out and showing on the base, you can always add some more trim around there, but I think I'm gonna leave mine as is. I think this came out awesome with the little foam dots around the edges mixed with the dots of the headband. I think I'm gonna seal these guys in, probably just using a varnish. That way they'll be a little bit more protected. But the last thing that we have to do for these ears is make a bow and then we can go ahead and put on all the pins. I took a look through some of my pre-made bows because I have some that are as options for my ear shop ears. And I have this metallic magenta pink one, which I think will go absolutely perfect with these ears. I also think that this is a good size because it still leaves a lot of the ears visible and a lot of space for you to put pins on. So this is now super easy and convenient. I don't have to make a bow, I just have to glue this on. But if you look at any of my other ear DIY videos, you'll see how I make these bows and the typical dimensions I use. So we just need a little bit of glue on here. Then we can take our bow, center it, and stick it on. I always check from the back to make sure it's kind of centered. And then I add additional glue kind of right along the edges on both sides there so that the bow kind of sits really nicely and is a bit more secure. So then we just need to add a little bit of glue on this side here. 
fold that down, hold that for a second, and then these pin trading, pin display ears are all complete. These also really remind me of kind of like Minnie and Mickey's 90th birthday celebration outfits. So I really like this rainbow scheme. But now I just need to find some pins to be able to put on these ears. So I've grabbed some of my smaller sized little food pins. And then so with these ears, all we have to do is just put the pins on and just push them in. But I wanna kind of make sure I have a layout that I like first. So I'm just gonna set the pins on and then once I'm kind of happy with how things are looking then I'll actually push them in and <laughs> finalize it I guess. Okay I think I'm kind of happy with that layout and so now all we have to do is just take our pins and push them in. So you do not need any pin backs with this. Just push them in as if you were putting them on a cork board or as if you were using these pin pages kind of as intended. And voila, actual fully functional pin trading display ears. Now the fantastic thing about the foam from the Kraken trade books is that this gives such a secure hold on the pins, much more secure than just a cork does. So like I'm very vigorously shaking these ears right now and these are not budging at all. If I shook or moved the lounge fly pin ears in even the slightest, all of them would fall off. So this is like the perfect material to use. And also the benefit of this is that you can put pins on the front side and then also on the back side. So it's definitely gonna make the ears a little heavier because pins are kind of insignificant in terms of their weight. But let me grab some more pins and fill up the display on the back just so that we can have a full 360 set of pin trading display ears. All right, so there we got some pins on the back of the ears and kind of holding them. They definitely do feel pretty heavy because again, those pins, the weight of them adds up, but at least making ears like this, you can double side it. It is fully functional. You wanna take a pin off. All you gotta do, boom, then you can stick it right back in. So I am super happy with how these turned out. And I really like this fun multicolor dots I went for. I will have a link in the description to the Kraken Trade website if you're interested in getting the materials necessary to make these ears. But hopefully you enjoyed this little DIY video. These ears I know would be super fun to be able to wear to the parks one day. But thanks for watching!